if you'd like to speak to Darren Hinch. Malcolm Turnbull, what do you think of him? Uh, I think he's a very intelligent, very clever man, and I think he's been a huge disappointment. I think I've really seen a, I don't think I've ever seen a Prime Minister lose his political cachet so fast as he has. I Is mean, he arrogant? I don't. I haven't found him. Well, look, I've only met. Him, I haven't seen him in the flesh. In uh, I talked, spoke to him on the phone the other night. I haven't seen him in the flesh in about fifteen years. When we were on the boat, the same side of the Republican debate, and I had a very pleasant time with him. And now to see him, look, I was flying back from Townsville, and uh, a flight attendant said, "She said I'm a Labor voter, but I would have voted for the the real Malcolm Turnbull." And I think that's what he has to fight. He's got What's this, the real one? Well, he has this fast. You know, the real one was in favour of gay marriage. He was against a plebiscite. He was in favour of climate change. He was going to support Kevin Rudd on the on emission trading schemes. That was the real one. Now he's made this pact with his the right wing of his party, and he can't move. You trust him? Well, he's a politician. <laughs> uh, well, yes, so are you uh, with yeah. an answer uh, like that? Uh, I, um, <laughs> no, uh, yes, I yes, I trust him. I trust him. You trust Bill Shorten? Uh, yes, I do. You've had discussions with both of them? Uh, yes, I, I've only had... Um, I had a, a friendly chat with Malcolm Turnbull the night after the election, and uh, I spent uh, half an hour at Treasury Place with Bill Shorten yesterday. Off you anything? Uh, no. Do you no. Ask? Do I ask for anything? No. No. I'm, uh, I've said before I'm not going to – I don't want a horse trade. And if I have to put one of my ideas off for six months because I don't like what the other side are, are, are trying to entice me with, I'll do it. I'll put it – I'll push it away mm-hmm. if I have to. But they're going to – they'll need you to support them on certain On some things, things they will, yeah. Look, Neil, I've – and it's going to be hard this very first time we're on the air together because I campaigned, we campaigned on seven issues, and I'll talk about them until the cows come home, right? Uh, but all the other things, like the ABCC and the pensions and super, I haven't got there yet. I, I rely on what you do too, the, the Australian, the Age, the Herald Sun and, 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 and Channel 7 or Channel 9 News. Um, so I want to get there. I've been, so far, I'm quite encouraged. I've had Scott Morrison call me and offer me independent sessions with Treasury. I've had... Uh, on what? On, on any on, on money bills on anything, um, I've had Brandis talk to me about issues that because ours some of the legal push things we'll be pushing. He's offered me the Attorney General's Department, and I spent an hour, a fascinating hour, with a guy who's impressed me called Nigel Scullion, Minister for Indigenous Affairs, uh, and he wants me to go out back with him to some West Australian Northern Territory settlements, Aboriginal settlements, and I'll, I'll do that in a, in, in a minute. I want to do that, get involved in that. This is Christmas for you, isn't it? Uh, well, yeah. What entry to the. Treasury entry to Attorney General's yeah. and a trip around the country well, in something interesting. Well, I had, I must admit, um, I, when I did Q&A the other night with Tony Jones afterwards, he said to me, he said, you know, Darren, he said, I'm, every journal should be envious of you because suddenly you've got all this entree. And, ah, it's going to it, drive you mad. I don't think so. Oh. I, I, well, I, I find it, I think it's going to well, be... you could be sitting next to, what, Pauline Hanson and, and, well, and Jackie Lambie. Well, if they, if they sit alphabetically, um, it will be Hanson, Hinch, Lambie, but I don't think it'll work that way. No, I, I've had several chats to Jackie Lambie, uh, including one last night, and she, a couple of things that she and I could work on. I mean, uh, things like um, Veterans Affairs, which she's been very strong on. I could do that. Um, Aboriginal Affairs, she's um, also, I think, is quite strong on. But in the other thing, she she's obviously will support me on the... Um, on, on the uh, the pedophile issue or the, the register, and I think so I think the major parties may come along a, a bit further along the road with me on that one as well. So you reckon that's the big one for you to get the pedophile register up? Uh, yes, it is, but it'll take some time. Um, the family court inquiry is what I want. I've got something else because it's, it's five years this month since I had a transplant. I want to try and get a million more people on the transplant list because there is an app out there. I'm not quite across it yet. There's a Commonwealth app in which you'll be able to punch up like a living will and sign up on an app and then and my argument is the family can't overrule you then that'll be a big issue to fight have you spoken to Pauline Hanson no I have not oh, oh, yeah, on sunrise we chat every Monday mm. uh, no I have not we haven't called each other what do you think of her um, policy on Muslims oh bizarre and yet she has a lot of support she has a lot of support uh, I did tweet uh, after the Sonia Kruger stuff yesterday about banning Muslim immigrants I said what are we going to not being able to ban all Muslims from competing on The Voice and Big Brother. That'll be a big problem. And, I mean, you had last night on Q&A two things that, that uh, struck me. was one, Pauline Hanson turning to Dastyari and, and, and saying, you're a Muslim? It, it reminded me of Sophie Mirabella pulling away from that guy when he, uh, when he from Get Up who collapsed on the desk. She looked like, oh, he had two heads. You know? so, and the, 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 the idea is she says, you know, put, put CCTV in mosques. Look, if there is a mosque... That for national security, that the coppers believe something's going on there, put secret cameras in there and recording devices. You can't put, it's like putting a, a CCTV in every synagogue. It can't be done. What about uh, banning Muslim migration? Uh, no. Why not? 
because you, you can't you can't suddenly say to people of various races, uh, you know, it's, it's, you can't say it's like I made the point the other day. And people said, oh, there's a specious argument. We didn't suddenly attack every Catholic in the world when the IRA was bombing restaurants and, uh, in London. You, know, you pick the extremists and you go after them. I mean, if you, if you, so you, you ban Muslim migration, we've got a mu- mu- female Muslim member of parliament. You say your family is verboten. It just, uh, you know, I know we had Hanson last night talking about separation of church and state. And he said, but we're a Christian country. Well, there's a, a lot of people are not Christians. Sylvie, go ahead, please. Sylvie, welcome. Oh, good morning, Darren. Morning. Finally, finally, my vote has counted. <laughs> <laughs> well, After all these years, I've had someone that I've voted for actually well, successful. Now, what I wanted to um, raise a couple of issues is that I know years ago you campaigned vehemently to get that hideous creature from the northern suburbs um, deported yeah. um, after he had uh, killed an Australian citizen. I would like you to go a little bit further and include people who have been granted citizenship. If they commit a crime that has a sentence of greater than 12 months, regardless of whether the spineless judiciary gave them 12 months, that they have voided their contract with citizenship because part of being an Australian citizen would be to be law-abiding. And if you don't follow the law, well, then the contract of granting you citizenship should be voided and you should go back where you came from. And I don't care if that's Spain or Somalia. There are enough good, worthy people but, waiting in the queue to take your yeah, place. But, but, but the, the argument there, the argument there, of course, is that when you become an Australian citizen, as I did 35 years ago, surely you achieve the, the rights and the privileges, as well as the responsibilities, of every Australian citizen. You should be treated no differently to somebody who was born here. And so I couldn't agree with that. So, yeah, and the only way it stands at the moment is you can lose your Australian citizenship if you're seen to have lied or conned or withheld information to get it. Yeah, and if you, if you are um, convicted of a crime and you're not a citizen, the first stop you make when you're released from prison is straight out to uh, Heidelberg or Villawood and you're deported. If so you're you would have deported yourself? If you're not a citizen. Not yeah, a citizen well, no, no, but if you hadn't been a citizen, you would have been deported twice. Uh, if you served more than 12 months jail. All right. Yeah, yeah, so a you wouldn't have deported yourself? Uh, no, a lot of people would have. <laughs> I think they would have probably uh, helped pay for it. I remember I used to do a joke once saying there was a $10,000 contract out of my head that 40,000 people put in 25 cents each. <laughs> Ange, hello, uh, Ange. Good morning. Yeah, Neil. Uh, good day, Darren. Uh, I voted for you, buddy, but I want to know how good a politician are you going to be? Are you going to take me out for lunch with your first pay packet? Uh, I am going to be a terrible politician. Well, it'd be illegal. I'll be a terrible <laughs> politician. And, yeah, and uh, and the answer probably is no. So there, I'm not being a politician. I'm not going to lie to you and say no. I'm not going to take you out to lunch. All right, Ange. <laughs> Thank you very much. More calls for Darren Hinch in a moment. I want to specifically youth crime, big issue today. It is, yeah. Youth crime, aggravated burglaries. And this this new form of home invasion with targeting targeting decent cars, um, I think the, 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 the courts and the police have to get tougher. You, you, the, the bail issue is huge. I don't care if a kid's 16 or 17, if he's do, committing these sorts of crimes or charged these sorts of crimes, he should not be turned, spun around and put on the streets again. A break, more from Darren in a the moment. They're targeting decent cars. Do you still drive the Cadillac? Yeah. You're safe. <laughs>